You ever have something where you know it's unbelievably flawed and it has so many imperfections, but you still love it anyway? That's this game for me. Developed by Metronomic and released only about a week before this video goes up, let's take a look at the new indie rock sensation No Straight Roads. I've actually been following the development of this game for a little while now, mainly because Ignis Animations introduced me to it via the soundtrack, and while I said that this game is flawed as heck, none of that applies to the music of this game. It is a joy to listen to. Which at the end of the day certainly makes sense, because music is the main focus of this game. It all takes place in Vinyl City, the musical capital of the world where the electricity is provided through the power of music. The company in charge of providing the electricity is NSR, led by Tatiana, who leads Vinyl City with a heavy emphasis on EDM. But blackouts have gone from the exception to the norm lately, so our two protagonists, Mayday and Zook, form the band Bunk Bed Junction in order to join the cause. Not with EDM, but with rock. Unfortunately, NSR is not too keen on their musical tastes, so much so to the point where they actually ban Rock from Vinyl City and leave Mayday and Zook out to dry. And so, Mayday and Zook set forth on a musical revolution to bring back Rock to Vinyl City and bring down NSR for good. Overall, a very interesting premise, if not a perfectly executed one. Gonna say this much right now, the narrative isn't gonna win a Pulitzer anytime soon, particularly in how predictable it was. Not a bad thing, mind you, it's just nothing to write home about. That is, until the characters actually start talking, and you're gonna realize that this game oozes charm. Ah! Great! You owe me a TV, mate. Those NSR buffoons! We managed to defeat an artist of theirs, but somehow, they still win! Did you have to punch the TV, though? And I also gotta give credit to the setting. Vinyl City is an absolutely beautiful locale with plenty to discover and lots of musical references to locate. Sure, most of what you'll discover are batteries and stickers, but take the time to examine the little nooks and crannies all over the place and you'll realize the world building is actually pretty good. And with the vast musical setting and awesome soundtrack, this game is basically a loving homage to a lot of interesting music genres. 90s boy bands and synth pop, 80s orchestral rock, disco, cutecore, even Malaysian rap? You think that you are a king, but if I said that, I'd be lying. The world doesn't revolve around you, even in the multiverse, you're not worth a verse. Oh, rest, 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 rest in peace. Oh, peace does. And going into some spoiler territory here, I do appreciate the commentary about what can happen when not just musicians, but any content creator loses sight of why they started doing what they do in the first place, and how some toxic fans can become their own issues and feel like their heroes owe them something, when in reality, they don't. But that's enough of the narrative and setting. How's the gameplay? Well, if I ever remake Top 10 Musician Fighters, Mayday and Zook would definitely be up there. No Straight Roads is a hack and slash style game, similar to Devil May Cry, with a heavy emphasis on rhythm to avoid attacks and execute special moves. And each of the characters actually plays pretty differently. Mayday is the guitarist and has a heavy focus on attack power and offense, while Zook plays the drums and is a combo master with a heavy emphasis on support. Both utilize their own strengths that can be amplified even further via upgrades to their abilities and instruments. You'll use these abilities in each of Vinyl City's districts, and while the levels themselves are nothing special, it's the boss fights where the gameplay starts really shining through. My personal favorites being Yinu and DJ Subatomic Supernova. Unfortunately, that's where the praise sort of ends, because while I do legitimately think that this game is fun, it is stiff and buggy as hell. Controlling Mayday and Zook doesn't feel very fluid, and while there are plenty of upgrades to be had, none of them really extend past shoot, slash, and parry to win the game. And while the visuals are certainly beautiful, the bright colors and camera angle don't really give you a good sense of location, so you're going to end up whiffing your attacks a lot. And then there are the occasional bugs and glitches that can range from inconsequential to really kind of annoying. Seriously, I even ran into a soft lock during Tatiana's boss fight where I did too much damage all at once using DK West's super move, so I didn't have the proper components to finish the fight all the while I was stuck without being able to reach her. And I'm just gonna say this right now, avoid the Switch version. The bugs in that one are twofold with animation errors, render failures, and... Not displaying the HUD during boss fights? What?! So yeah, this game definitely needed more time in rehearsal, but was it still entertaining? Yeah, I'd say so. 
No straight roads may have missed the mark a bit in functionality, but I think it makes up for it in charm and fun factor. Great! You owe me a TV, Tatiana. I don't even know why you put your TV in my office in the first place. And if that's something you can get behind and you absolutely love music, then yeah, I'd say this game is worth it. For those of you who are still skeptical, I'd wait for a price drop.